What's going on YouTube? My name is Calvin. I go by Castle Scope. In this video, you're going to be seeing how you can do easy hair swaps in Photoshop. All right, so the first thing that I'm showing you is just how to make a selection. I use select subject. You could use pen tool or whatever you may want to use, but I'm just going to use the lasso tool because I'm just doing the hair. Like, obviously, you need to make a mask of your subject, right? But for this case, I'm just using the hair so I can show you guys how to feather it out. So you see me just going along kind of neatly. But when you're doing hair, kind of make those jagged points that you see me making so that you can make a really nice selection. So then hit that layer mask button and then go on to your layer mask. And I'm just using the feather tool right in the top left corner. It's the refine edge tool. And... Brush those edges in um, really gently along the sides. You can change the size of your brush with the bracket keys, but just make sure it's neat and nice. And then you see, once I'm done with that, I hit decontaminate colors. I always use that. I don't use anything else but decontaminate colors. And then I output it to a new layer with the layer mask. That's how uh, I do my hair selections. And then um, you can check always by putting a background in uh, behind the layer, right? So I put a background behind the layer. Just to check and make sure I want to get rid of some of that, some more of the like just excess pixels that are there. So I do the same thing and go back on the layer mask. And uh, I just have my, my settings the same as last time. And I just decontaminate the colors again and put it out to a new layer mask. So that's how you're going to select your hair. Alright, so now we're at the more difficult part, and I say difficult just because there's a lot of adjustments that you're going to have to make and experiment with, because every skin tone, everything that you might have to match is going to be different, and it's not always the same, but when you're doing this, make sure you just make a duplicate layer, so that you don't like uh, just cut off half of Lamello's face, and then because we're going to do a swap onto both heads, so we want to make sure we have duplicate layer, but you see I just make a selection real quick, and then I'm just hitting that layer mask icon and showing you guys that that's just the skin a little bit of the forehead and the head right so there we have that right there and now at this point I'm just getting everything ready to put it onto the next the next layer so I'm going to my Anthony Edwards and I'm just control C control V to get that hair selection on there okay you guys see me moving around with the control control T transform tool and I'm just resizing it and then I believe next what you should do is use your warp tool like you can use you can use the liquify tool right away but like what I like to use is the warp tool so you're gonna press control T and then on that control T you're just gonna drop the opacity first so you can see behind and then right click go to warp all right so when you're on the warp you're just gonna match up that nice hairline that Anthony Edwards has or whoever's hairline you're doing just try to match up the, the hairline with the warp tool real quick and uh, dropping your opacity is really gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to see that. And then I just bring it back up sometimes just to see like what it looks like, all right? And then now next go to filter and then go to liquify, okay? So filter liquify. Gonna be using the forward warp tool to uh, just push this boundary, push the boundaries and just make everything look more cohesive, okay? So turn your backdrop on and then set your backdrop layer to the Anthony Edwards mask that you already had because just make sure you have mask so you can see behind and uh, the mode should be on behind as well so now I'm just using the forward warp tool and um, just getting everything right and just check them out past these back and forth right so now at this point we have everything all lined up so now we have to do a lot of adjustments on our on our layers all right, so I'm erasing a lot of just the hair on the top of his head from my layer mask. Always work on a layer mask when you're doing this. And what we're gonna be utilizing really is selective color, black and white, and curves, all right? So the first thing that I put on was a selective color. And the ones that you're gonna really want to uh, work off of are red and yellow. You see me just twitching back up between red and yellow. Because red and yellow really brings out the colors of your subject, like skin, skin tone wise. And then create a clipping mask because we don't want to affect anything else. So just right click and create a clipping mask. And uh, just you have to just play around on your reds and yellows. And just just honestly, I could say like there's a thing that you have to do specifically. But you have to just experiment. And once you see some tones that are kind of matching, it's not going to match perfectly with just one layer. Especially when you're going from like 
um, white skin to dark skin light skin to dark skin it's kind of harder to do so you just have to just notice when something looks um, more to a tone of us of a skin color right so then I bring out my black and white and with your black and white you definitely want to set the layer mode to luminosity okay and we're still gonna be working off of the reds and yellows off of our layer mask of luminosity black and white okay so now you see when I use the luminosity it's actually helping this out uh, a lot more than than before and I just like went down to the bottom just to see show you guys like those other layers don't really do much things to other colors so really work on your yellows and reds whatever you're working on whether it be selective color or um, black and white okay so you see I'm just adjusting adjusting and um, it just takes a little bit of trial and error and you're just gonna get it eventually um, the next thing that I add on is curves once I see that the tones are starting to match I can just like kind of tell from my eye that the tones are starting to match so now I put on a curves on a clipping mask okay so now with my curves it actually makes it pretty pretty uh simple once you have the tones right from selected color and black and white you can see that it's really uh, starting to match right and now at this point I add, also added the levels because levels brings out more of the highlights and darken some of the shades too so these are the things that you're gonna have to just experiment with but just remember to stay on red and yellow when you're using black and white and uh, selective color and black and white should be on luminosity but you guys can see my process right here um, it's nothing that's just like super easy to do per, per se but you just have to keep keep trying to see what works best for what what uh, layers because every every skin tone is different and everybody has different skin tones so it's always going to be different that's the that's the that's the beauty of Photoshop you just gotta go through it and uh, when you guys see me now erasing some of the head that's just to blend in the forehead so I'm on a layer mask with a black and I just blend in some of the forehead right then I go to my curves and instead of just going on RGB I'm working off of the blue in the red because I see there's a little bit of blue on him and a little bit of red in his skin and that's just something you pick up with the eye if you guys haven't seen my color wheel tutorial that would be a really good one to uh, look at to understand more about color but once you have once you just start using Photoshop a lot you'll get a, a really good sense of color and now I'm just going around his ear with my lasso tool just to get that hair from him off so that we can just have the the hair from LaMelo Ball onto Anthony Edwards because that's all I want to be there so I'm just using my my black brush to get that stuff off and like I said always work on a layer mask because black hides white reveals you can you can delete all this stuff or erase all this stuff indestructibly right so if we wanted to bring it back we could not saying that we would on this but you could <laughs> so at that point it's like pretty much everything looking pretty nice um, I just adjusted a little bit more with like saturation because saturation if it's too red you can bring the saturation down and it's gonna turn it to more of a brown so that's really good to use but just remember to have a layer mask on that as well so you can just uh, set your own your own opacities with a with a brush on how you feel that it should should look like to your eye because if it's too red you can bring it down with some saturation but just work on a layer mask and you will definitely get it done and then now I'm just adding a little bit of brown and then I put my blending options on separate that piece on the bottom you would hold down alt and then separate it or if you're on the Mac it would be option as you guys told me yesterday when I didn't know the button for Mac so now I know that but um yeah at this point you're just gonna go back on your adjustment layers and just you can either reveal some more or hide some it depends what uh, color you want the hair to be so you can hide like the hair but relatively you're gonna just keep the skin the same after you do most of the adjustments because it's uh, pretty matched up now so that's what you're gonna do just keep the hair mostly but or to keep the skin mostly but you can recover some of the hair color very easily by just brushing on black with your um, with your brush on a layer mask okay and then 
I'm also using color balance just to just to get a little 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 bit more of balance on that color because you you can just adjust this all day but at some point you're gonna be like all right I think that's I think we got it right but you could just sit there and adjust in your layers all day and don't ever be afraid to have too many adjustment layers like I always have so many adjustment layers but that's just how it is man and now once I'm done with that, I'm just moving on to the LaMelo Ball one. And I'm not going to talk as much on this one. Just going to let you guys see the process. But um, just pretty much followed the same steps for the LaMelo Ball swap. Or hair swap, whatever you want to call it. So I'm making my selection. Dropping it on there. And then I'm, I'm low-key seeing like some spots I didn't like. So I just added a layer mask and got rid of some of those spots with the black brush on really soft just painting and going along real real soft with my brush and then i'm like all right bet let's get to it so i'm resizing it it already looks so funny converting it to a smart object and uh then i'm just gonna warp it to lamello's head and I really utilize liquify on this one because of the, the shape of the hair. Because the way it's around his ears, to do that with just warp would be really hard. So make sure you guys use liquify. It's a really, really good tool. And I feel like it's underrated. I don't see it used enough. So definitely use liquify. It's a very underrated tool. Right? So I'm just putting the backdrop on. And then I'm selecting the lamello ball layer to be behind that, that hair layer. So now I'm just dropping the opacity. And I'm just matching everything up and it's pretty much just what you see is what you get on liquify it's not anything that's difficult to use at all it's very easy to use and it's super helpful so make sure you guys just see where the hairline is and where the skin is gonna have to be transformed and doing doing this process on um, on a dark skin person to a lighter skin person is very it's it's a lot easier I'm, I'm gonna say definitely because you see right away when I'm sliding my red and yellow like it's easily going to that that lighter tone and then I'm just working on my reds and that my reds and yeah my reds right now again from my curves but you see it's like already pretty close obviously there just needs to be a couple adjustments but you guys will see and uh what i what i did on this one that really helped me out that i didn't even think about before is a method that you guys can probably try out uh so instead of like messing around suit like so long with just the the forehead i actually just made a duplicate copy of lamello's head um i actually made a duplicate copy of lamello's forehead and i just pasted it on and i used surface blur so you guys are gonna see that it's gonna be coming up pretty soon but I pretty much just made a duplicate copy of his forehead after masking it out. And then I just use a little bit of surface blur. So yeah, here it comes right here. Just use my lasso tool. And I just duplicate it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or anything like that. But um, see right there, that's the forehead. And then I'm just going to go ahead and erase some of the top of the head. I didn't even use a layer mask on that because I just knew I wanted the forehead, right? So just soft brush with an eraser, then go to blur, surface blur, and I'm just blurring out those lines from the forehead. So I use surface blur. Okay, you guys can use blurs. Like I, I, I don't like blurs. Seeing my blurs and compositions, but when we're doing just like um, work on, on an individual or doing just like a thumbnail or something, that is fine. Okay, <laughs> and then I'm just using my layer mask and just trying to blend everything in. So that, that was like a really, really cool method that I, I saw that I can utilize. So in the future, I'm definitely going to go to that again. But uh, definitely want to make sure that you have the other way down because it's just, it's just good to know how to do this both ways. And both, both uh, methods of using curves and black and white with yellows and reds implies on both of these. So you need to know your colors. You need to know how to match things and this will help you tremendously man tremendously so then i'm adding curves and i'm just gonna put a little bit of shade on the side of the head see i'm just putting a little bit of shades on the side checking lamello see where he's at right now 
and everything's just looking pretty good <laughs> pretty funny to be honest i think i'm gonna do a couple more of these uh, you'll probably you guys will probably see them on instagram today as i'm posting this too so make sure you guys check out my instagram at castle scoped um same as my youtube but just no spaces and then with color balance i just decided to change some of the hair color and color balance is really good for that for her hair color and then i'm just masking out some of the hair color but then you guys are gonna see i dropped the opacity down because it's like really really uh reddish so i just dropped the opacity down or the fill whatever you want to drop it down the fill or the opacity either works and then at that point i'm just switching back and forth because we got both of our hair swaps done and look at that guys so that's the video for today showing you guys how to get your own hair swaps done with NBA players or with whatever you want to use them on. It does not really matter. Um, so I hope this video helped you guys out. Let me know what other tutorials you want to, me to, to bring to you guys on YouTube. And I appreciate all the support you guys. Until next time, it's been Council Scope. Stay scope, y'all. I'm out.